Hello everyone, this is our second video to our series How we can cure or get rid of diabetes through surgery. Uh, diabetes in our in our first video we have explained what exactly diabetes is. With, our, with my friend Dr. Moini Dun, in our first video we have explained this. My name is Prashant. I am a healthcare consultant. I uh, I have been in this industry for about 20 years. I have two kids. One is a DJ and the other is a beautiful uh, daughter. I have been working in this industry for 20 years now. Uh, today we are going to actually discuss as promised as to what surgery is uh, we are doing here, what surgery we are, we are doing here and uh, along with Dr. Moini Dean uh, that can actually cure diabetes and get rid of diabetes for you. Uh, you know, diabetes is a, is a kind of epidemic which, uh, which is going everywhere and uh, a huge mass of population is under diabetes today. So I will actually ask uh, Dr. Mohaniti, my friend, to explain on what surgery he does and uh, what, are the, what are the qualifications for a patient to actually qualify for this particular disease so that, you know, the patient becomes a, di a diabetic free. So uh, let me... Let me uh, Thank uh, Dr. Munidhi to come on to this video. Uh, I'll give now to Dr. Munidhi to explain actually what he does. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, we are back again in the second video. So basically I want to tell, as we discussed in the first video, diabetes is a multifactorial disease and obesity is one of the main reasons. So that's the reason the word called diabetes has come. Diabetes is something called obesity with diabetes. Because obesity and diabetes are closely related, so the word of diabetes is rampant now. So what I want to say is like, uh, as we deal with obesity and diabetes, what I want to say is when the patient becomes obese, the normal BMI for the patient should be less than 25. The BMI between 25 to 30 is overweight. So BMI is body mass index. Uh, index. So any, any doctor can actually tell you what is your BMI or if you go to a hospital to find out your BMI, they can actually do it for you. So if you want to find, please visit, us, uh, visit a physician or a hospital to get your BMI done. So, in this video, I want to tell how diabetes happened to these obese patients. When you are lean, you don't have diabetes. For example, if you become obese, what happens? Even though the body is producing adequate insulin, because of insulin resistance, we call it as insulin resistance, because of obesity. This insulin resistance happens because of obesity. The insulin is not absorbed. So that is uh, what we call as insulin resi resistance. Guys, you might have heard of antibiotic resistance. You know, you keep on using antibiotics for a longer period of time. And then that antibiotic, you know, uh, your body uh, becomes antibiotic resistance. So, here we are talking of insulin resistance. Right? Right, yes. doctor? Yes. Yeah. So, how, uh, how this surgery really helps in getting uh, control of the diabetes is, it's a number one point, basically what happens. So I told what is a barrier now. The insulin resistance is a barrier. So what the surgery will help? The surgery will reduce your weight. Okay. As the patient loses weight, okay. then this insulin resistance is broken. Okay. So, so when I say insulin, insulin resistance can also be broken. Broken. Okay. Insulin resistance can be broken because the pancreas producing insulin it is not absorbed before. So whatever and insulin and the weight losses when the patient loses weight, whatever insulin is produced by the pancreas is properly absorbed. Okay, it is used. It is used. So, when the insulin is properly absorbed by the tissues, automatically the sugar levels will control. Okay, okay. In this way the surgery works. Okay. One of the mechanisms. Number two mechanism is even the genetic changes happen in your body. Okay, great. Number three is the, uh, the surgery, when you do the gastric bypass surgery or any bariatric surgery, incretins are the hormones released by the small intestine cells. And this incretins itself will release the insulin resistance. The when you are losing weight, the insulin resistance will go down. Even this incretins will release the insulin resistance. That's the reason post-surgery, from the day one of the surgery itself, for example, today we do the surgery, from the evening itself, we stop most of the diabetic medication. So these are basically the, the intestine release these hormones. Hormones, post-surgery. Post surgery. Which okay, post surgery. Uh, which happen before surgery. Okay, okay. So what he is saying is, if you get this bariatric uh, surgery done, and if you have because you are obese, you have diabetes, you become insulin resistant. So what happens is, if you do this surgery, 
your insulin resistance is broken and the amount of insulin that your body produces gets optimally utilized number one so what happens is your your sugar level goes down because your insulin starts working it is absorbed by the cells number two what he is saying and that we have to understand is the intestine post surgery releases hormones which actually in a different way or in a second way actually helps the uh, helps to break your insulin barrier and you know the, the cells start uh, absorbing insulin and insulin gets utilized to its maximum so there, there are there are two things happening here after the surgery which gets your uh, blood sugar down and you get rid of your uh, what do you say uh, diabetes uh, Dr. L, I would also like to understand if this diabetes is basically for diabetes two, or it is for diabetes one. There is something we call uh, yes. something we call uh, gestational diabetes also, which yes. probably is out of usually diabetes of three types: type one, type two, and gestational. Yes. Gestational is during pregnancy. Yeah. The name itself tells you yeah. gestational. Not many people would <coughs> know about this. But type one, type one diabetes is childhood diabetes. The patient gets diabetes in early childhood. Okay. So basically, in type one, the insulin secreting cells, that is called beta cells, of the pancreas are damaged by autoimmune mechanism. Okay. The body itself will destroy the cells. So where there is absolutely no insulin secretion at all. So for them, what type is, one? Okay. For type one diabetes, what is what is actually the treatment that we normally do? Type one is simple. We have to replace the insulin. So that's either insulin or surgery is only for type two diabetes. Okay. Type 2 diabetes is diabetes which occurs in the late Okay. Age. So this surgery is not for type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is a childhood diabetes where the beta cells which are produced by uh, your uh, pancreas is destroyed by your autoimmune system and you know there is no insulin in the body itself. So what happens is you have to treat a diabetes 1 type uh, patient with either insulin or insulin pump which possibly is uh, there. and. Uh, you know, the, these are the treatment for diabetes 1. For, but for diabetes 2, what my friend is saying is this surgery is basically for diabetes 2 which happens when you grow a little old. Okay? Or which is arising out of obesity. When you are you're obese, you, you tend to move towards diabetes. Just like that, uh, for example, you are 40 years, you get recently diagnosed with diabetes. This diabetes definitely is type 2. Because all those days you didn't have diabetes. If because had, pancreas were uh, yes, secreting your beta yes. cells and your... So what happens in type 2 diabetes? The insulin is produced, but it's not absorbed, just like I told you before. Okay. okay. Just like I mentioned before, the insulin is reduced by the by the cells. Maybe it may be not as good quantity as, as an other person, but the insulin is produced in okay. type 2. One it's only not absorbed, just the insulin resistance. Okay. So one more thing. Uh, uh, who are the patients who normally would qualify type 2 diabetes, I understand, but then what should be the BMI for these patients where you can actually go ahead and say, okay, this is a patient who qualifies for this yes. surgery? So definitely there is a qualification criteria for this surgery. We don't do surgery for everyone who is diabetes. Okay. For example, the basic cutoff is the body mass index that is height in, meter, height in, uh, height in uh, meters by uh, weight in kgs by height in meters square. Okay. That is body mass index. For example, your weight is 103 kgs. 103 by your height is 160 cm. 1.6 into 1.6. You get a value that is called BMI. The body mass index should be at least minimum cutoff is 30. Okay. Any patient with diabetes with BMI more than 30 qualifies for the surgery. Okay, so, so first thing, obese, diabetes with BMI above 30 qualifies for this surgery. surgery. Okay, uh, doctor, uh, if somebody is there who is not obese, still he has diabetes, mm -hmm. and uh, his BMI is okay, can the surgery also help these guys? For example, the BMI, if the BMI is uh, between 26 to 30, still there is one surgery called uh, sleeve gastrectomy with duodenal jejunal bypass. Okay, this is a little medical term, so but we it's call a it a DJB, DJB with sleeve. Okay, there so is one surgery. Called, uh, for this, uh, we can still do a surgery for this patient between uncontrolled diabetes, for the patient with uncontrolled diabetes, BMI ranging BMI 26 to 30. But bariatric and metabolic surgery as such, the cutoff is 30. Okay, so what he is trying to say is, uh, people with uh, diabetes and they are not obese can still be operated through a different kind of surgery, 
uh, the technical name obviously he told you and uh, those guys also qualify for this particular surgery. It's a different surgery. Uh, people with diabetes, obese and more than, you know, the BMI more than 30 qualifies for another kind of a bariatric surgery which would obviously help people to get rid of diabetes. Uh, doctor, can we understand as to uh, uh, what is the success rate for these kind of surgeries? Yes. So the success rate depends on few factors. First of all, the duration of diabetes. If the duration of diabetes is less than 5 years, the success rate of the surgery is very, very high. And number two is insulin secreting capacity of the pancreas. We measure by blood tests called insulin levels, fasting insulin levels and C-peptide levels. C-peptide levels is insulin secreting capacity of the pancreas. If the C-peptide level is really good, more than 3 or more than 2, the chances of getting rid of diabetes is very high. So, uh, try to understand two things. Number one is, uh, uh, what do you say doctor, number one? Uh, duration of diabetes. Duration. If you have diabetes for about five years, you are fit for this surgery. Number two, if your uh, peptide levels are more than two or three, right? Yes. So if your peptide levels are C more, peptide. C peptide level are more than two and three, you... Uh, the response to the surgery is very good. Yeah. So the earlier you come for this particular surgery, from the time you are getting diagnosed with diabetes, you know, the better are the results. The outcomes are excellent for this particular surgery. Uh, so, I, I'm not telling the patient with uh, more than 10 years of diabetes and not qualified for surgery. I'm telling they're very much qualified. But the response of surgery for this early diabetes is very, very, very good compared to the late diabetes. Okay. For example, you consider some patients, uh, some patients even with resistant diabetes also respond to the surgery. Oh, that's great. What happens? That's like, great. for example, resistant diabetics, for example, the patient is diabetic from 20 years, 25 years. We do a gastric bypass. What will happen? I can't assure that they will be getting out completely diabetes. But definitely, they were using insulin, they may come to medication, simple medication. The diabetes is getting So possibly one or two tablets? Yes, possibly one or two tablets. So but most of the patients fall into the 95% criteria. Okay. Okay. Right? Because we can show here. So guys, if you can see this particular, uh, if you have seen this diagram, okay, this is a survey which was done for 500 patients. Now, patient who underwent, 500 patients underwent this kind of surgery and in 95% of this uh, uh, research which was done, they responded, very well. they responded very well on diabetes. So possibly, uh, you know, this says that people who have diabetes for over 20 years or 25 years, possibly they might be in their age of 60, you will get rid of your insulin and you will come down to a tablet or two in a day. So let's understand. Two things, 95% of people who come uh, with a diabetes of 5 or 10 years get relief out of this. The 5% which belongs to the category of where the diabetes is more than 20 or 25 years, where they have a age of 60, 65, they come down from their insulin to a tablet or two in a day. So this, this, this is the quality of life uh, improves and you can just imagine how it would be for you to be off medicines, off insulin and you know it's a, it's a, it's a cure for diabetes. Let's also understand a little bit more on uh, uh, the kind of, uh, the kind of uh, pre, uh, you know, whenever you go for a surgery, the pre uh, requirements where the patients are supposed to do certain things, which I'll ask my doctor friend to actually explain. Uh, doctor, tell us, uh, how do you, uh, uh, when you take a patient for this particular surgery, what preparations do you do before the surgery? So definitely, when you do any surgery, first you have to do your blood test, ECG, echo, x-ray, and all those things. Why we do this? We have to check how is his heart, how is your kidney, how your lungs, everything. That's a basic fitness of the surgery. And number two is, we do all the blood tests. For example, just like I told, C peptide levels, fasting insulin levels, we see HbA1c, how is his average levels in three months, everything. Is there is there anything that they have to do with their diet? Ah, diet. So what happens when they are, uh, uh, one of the main principles of surgery is like, uh, the patient, if the patient is on liquid diet, that's very good for us. For a brief period of 
three to four. So days. you mean to say take a lot of water before you come? Yeah, what happens? No, not about water. Liquid diet. Okay. The patient should not be taking any solid food for them before surgery, four days before surgery, okay. prior to surgery. Because what happens? When you take liquid diet, what happens? There are two advantages. The patient will lose that extra water in the body, at one point. Number two, the, the thickness of the left lobe of the liver will be reduced. Okay. So whatever, in this way, it makes our surgery really comfortable. Okay. And, and, and this surgery is minimal invasive or how yes, do you do it's it? it's a minimal invasive surgery. It's a, just a keyhole surgery. We call it as keyhole. Small keyholes, like the small incision, very tiny incisions, ranging around from 5 mm to 1.2 centimeters. Okay. okay. So guys, let's try to understand, this surgery is not an open surgery. You know, where you open your stomach and do, you know, a lot of things. It becomes very dangerous and becomes very, you know, you feel... The recovery like, period will be like, yeah. so, so it's a minimal invasive surgery. So, minimal invasive surgery where you uh, do an incision of uh, about a centimeter or so, and he goes inside and does his surgery and come back. And uh, how many days it takes, doctor? So, the hospitalization will be roughly around three to five days. Okay. So what he is saying is about 3 to 5 days in the hospital and you are off. So guys, this is our second video and we are trying to educate people on diabetes. We are trying to give value to the, uh, your, your people around here. We are trying to make you understand, we are trying to make you feel that you know diabetes is, a, is, a, is not a progressive disease. It is a reversible disease. Various factors, various ways of doing it, we just understood how people with diabetes right from five years old or 20 years old diabetic patients you know there is a hope we are here to give you hope write to us at the end of this video you will get my details my email id my facebook my my linkedin my everything write to us we will respond in this video there i will also announce for people that we will conduct a webinar on this very soon. Webinar is actually a seminar online. We would like, we, we will keep you updated with a new post and once you give us some email ID, once you send us, shoot an email ID to us, we will respond to you. In our third video, we are going to make one announcement for everyone who will be watching our video and who will be writing to us on our emails. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, uh, Dr. Moynihan, thanks a lot Thank you for much. for actually uh, you know making people understand what diabetes is and how you can actually uh, get rid of diabetes throughout your course of life. Uh, thanks, guys. God bless you. Just wait for a third video, which is coming very soon. Thank you so much. God bless you. Have a nice day. Thanks. Bye bye.